All right, let's get started with this stuff. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be talking about cubes and cube root functions. Um, so stuff with a power of three. So let's first talk about what is a cube and a cube root. Well, we're first familiar with squares and square roots. So three squared is three times three, which is nine. X squared is X times X, which we write as X squared. So a cube root, or sorry, so a cube is something times itself three times. Two to the third is two times two times two, which is eight. X to the third, X times X times X, which is X to the third. Square roots, um, so that's, that's kind of explaining cubes. And roots are saying, hey, what number times itself equals this? So 16, the number times itself is four. And 25, number times itself is five. Well, cube root is kind of like that, but it's if we have a number times itself times itself to give us this number. So like to make up eight, we have two times two times two. So cube root of eight is two. Versus a cube root of 27, would be three times three times three gives you 27. So cube root is three. That's kind of the explanation of what those things do. But let's start talking about functions. So the cubic graph is, or the cubic parent function is y equals x to the third. And it looks something like this, where it's got this little inverse thing. Um, point of inflection is what we call it. And this thing has a domain range of all real numbers. Uh, versus the cube root graph looks something like this. Um, it actually also has a domain range of all real numbers. I need to fix those before I send this out. It's all real numbers. Ignore why I wrote here. All right. So let's talk about transformations. Now, for a cubic graph, our transformations the A is a vertical stretch or compression. The B is a horizontal stretch or compression. The H is a shift left or right. And the K is a shift up or down. For cube root, it's basically the same thing. Now, if you're in L, you're not going to be seeing this B. Uh, that B is not really relevant to y'all. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now, let's get into kind of describing and sketching the transformation. So I'm going to switch out of this. I'm going to switch over to here. Cool. So um, if we are going to describe the transformations of this, um, one thing we can do is let me click on my little transformation thing if I can. All right, OBS is there and we got our transformation stuff. So let me move this over to the side and switch it back to the Mac. Okay, so actually let's do it this way. Move that there and move this here. Cool. Okay, so we want to describe and sketch the transformation. So in this case, our a value is negative two. So we're gonna make our a value negative two. And our h, we said, is essentially negative one because we're minusing negative one to get that plus one. Our k is minus four. So what changes to happen between our original and our new graph? Well, again, we described our changes for this stuff. Um, let me just actually insert text box. Yeah, there we go. So what changes? Well, the negative in front, so our A being negative two, that reflected over the x-axis. Yeah, let's move this out of the way. For the negative part, the two would be a vertical stretch. The 
the B, well, the B is just one, so nothing. The H is essentially negative one, and so that would shift it left or right. Well, here it looks like we went from zero, zero to kind of to the left. So I'm gonna say shift left one, and then my K, K, uh, we went down, because this is a minus four. So we went shifted down four. So that's really what we're looking for. And we can sketch our, our new graph. All right, what about something like this? Okay, let's again grab a text box. I'm just going to kind of crudely type it. So our A here, let's first switch these things around. So now we're dealing with cube root function. And I'm gonna reset these things. Okay, so our A, we have this one half out in front. So if I change this to a one half, what happens? Well, my new graph is smaller. It's vertically compressed. Compressed by a factor of one half. All right, B, do I have anything multiplying on the inside? No, I don't. So I'm just gonna say one and no change. H, I have a plus one inside. Well, this is a minus H. So I'm gonna say that again, I have a negative one. And so that's moving it left here. So my H is negative one, so I'm shift left one. And then my K, I have a plus three on the end. So my K is three, so let's try that. And that shifted it up, three. All right, that's really what we're looking for here. Now, let's talk about these verifying compositions. So I'm gonna minimize this real quick. And let's grab a text box. All right. So if I'm going to verify by composition, I'm putting either, all right, f of g of x or g of f of x, something like that. One function inside the other. Uh, let's put g of x on the inside. So let's do this. I'm gonna insert an equation. I'm gonna say f of g of x equals, well, my g of x, my inside bit, is this q root. So let's let's type that first. Q root of x. That's the, the g of x bit. And it's inside f of x. So let's put this thing on the inside of some parentheses. We're essentially going to raise this to the third power. Okay. Professional. All right, so that's what that looks like. But what happens if I do that? Well, if I do that, the cube root and the cube should cancel each other out, so I should just be left with x. And if I am left with x, they are inverses. Cool, awesome. Um, let's try this one, same idea. Uh, so, let's grab a text box. I'm gonna be putting in, let's do f of g of x. And I'm just gonna kind of crudely type this. So I'm putting the g of x on the inside. So that's cube root. Uh, yeah, I need to use an equation to be able to type this thing. So f of g of x. First thing is we have a cube root of x plus two. And if I'm putting this inside this x here, that's x cubed. So I need to raise this to the third power and make that professional looking. Cool. And then there's a minus two on the end. So let's put that minus two on the end. All right. Now let's try to see if we can simplify anything. This whole thing is both cube rooted and cubed. So those should cancel. So I should be left with something that is f of g of x, 
but no cube root and no cube. So I have something like this. So f of g of x should just equal x. So yes, they are inverses. Cool. Let's do one last one. Um, this thing. All right. Let's grab a text box. Let's grab an equation. And I'm going to do the same thing. F of g of x. So g of x is 2 x to the third minus 1. And we're going to take this whole thing. We're going to shove it in where this x is. So I see this is x plus 1. So I'm going to take this stuff and I'm just going to put a plus 1 on the end. And let's throw some more parentheses around it. Because I'm in front of this x plus 1, which is why I have, I have a 1 half. So let's put a 1 half out in front. Okay. Now this whole thing is under a cube root. So what I'm going to have to do is copy this bit, shove it under this cube root. All right. So this is redundant. All right. Cool. So what can we start getting rid of? Well, let's copy this. And I see that these parentheses, the ones around this 2x to the third plus 1, nothing's multiplying those. So let's get rid of those parentheses. Can I do that? No, it doesn't like me. This is why we don't use uh, computers. This is why typing this stuff is rough. It's a lot easier to handwrite. Um, but let's, let's see if we can do this. Short version, this minus 1 and this plus 1 aren't doing anything. Okay. Next step. Copy this. All right. We have 1 half times something. We have 2 times something. That should cancel. That should just be 1. All right. Cool. Now, I have cube root and I have a cube. Those should all cancel. So this whole thing should just be x. So are they inverses? Yes. Absolutely. And typing out this was a pain in the butt. All right. Hopefully this helps. Um, if it does, great. Have a good one, y'all. If I can figure out how to stop this. All right. Now have a good one.